First story. OP's girlfriend invited her ex over to his apartment. And OP is absolutely livid. I live in a big city in my own apartment. My girlfriend Lily lives with her roommates. But if I'm being honest, she basically lives over here 80% of the time. Early today or yesterday, while I was at the gym with my friend Mike, she texted me that she had an old friend she hadn't seen in a while that's in town, and that it would be nice to have a quiet place to catch up. I said they could use my apartment, and that I'd go out for dinner with Mike, so they'd have time to catch up. During this time, I'm at the gym, so I was in a rush. I didn't ask who she was inviting over etc. Well apparently I should, as the old friend she was apparently catching up with alone in my apartment was her only ex-boyfriend Kyle. Around 30-ish minutes after this conversation, I get a text from her saying they're at the apartment. I just said, bet, and continued with my friend. Mike and I finished our workout around 7pm, and decided we'd go to Whole Foods, as their hot and salad bars had some great food. We ate there and finished around 8.30ish. I'm on my way home now, and honestly, I wasn't expecting anything other than just saying hi and heading my arse to bed. It had been a long day, and honestly, I was just ready to get to sleep. I arrive home around 9pm, and at this point, I have no idea if her friend is still over or not. I was secretly hoping they weren't, as I didn't feel like socializing at all. But hey, I'll take one for the team. When I walked in the apartment, I saw some big arse Timberland boots that obviously are men's. I'm immediately like F, her friend brought her boyfriend. I'm going to have to stay up and socialize now. I take off my shoes and jacket and start heading down the mini hallway. As I enter the living area, I see my girlfriend sitting on the couch with a man at separate ends, staring right at each other and talking. My girlfriend notices me and jumps a little. I didn't really find this odd at the time, but now that I think back on it, it makes sense. At this point, I'm still completely oblivious. I say hello and start walking towards the man. I'm looking around the house at this point for her friend. Honestly, I just thought she was in the bathroom or something. I shake the guy's hand and say something like, Hey, I'm Lily's boyfriend. He replied back in like a quirky arse way with some, I'm Kyle Lily's ex. I was like, oh my fault, I thought you were her friend's boyfriend. Then it got a little quiet, and I rapidly came to the realization that my girlfriend has been alone with her ex in my apartment for the last couple hours. I look at my girl and say, so I'm taking this as your old friend. She said yes in a soft voice. At this point, I wasn't letting myself jump to any conclusions, but I'm tired and I don't feel like socializing. I'm also now upset because my girl was just chilling with her ex in my apartment. It got quiet again, and these two made zero effort to continue whatever conversation they were having just moments ago. Lily asks how my day was, and I say it was fine. I guess again getting the vibe, I'm interrupting something. At this point, I'm fed up only like a minute or so has passed since my question to her, and I look at him and ask Kyle, Hey, do you mind ending it here for today? I actually got some things I got to talk to Lily about. He says, she invited me over though, and we're still reminiscing on the good old days. I look at Lily, she can't even look me in the eyes. I look back at Kyle and say, Alright, let me rephrase it. This is my apartment, and I'm telling you to leave. He then looks at her and says, Do you want me to leave? At this point, and I'm not proud of it, I completely lose my SHT, saying, What the F do you mean by that? I don't give a SHT if she wants you to leave or not. I'm telling you to get the F out of my house. Lily is telling me to calm down and she turns and tells him he needs to leave. Kyle gets up and heads towards the hallway to get his SHT. I follow, and he ends up leaving. I come back, and Lily is now pissed at me, saying I embarrassed her. I embarrassed you. She then goes on about how my reaction is totally uncalled for, as she told me he was coming over and asking. I was like Lily, you said a effing friend was coming over. Not once do you mention this friend was a male, much less your effing ex. She then says that my reaction was bullshit, and that I acted like an ass. I tell her you were with your effing ex in my apartment. Do you not understand how much of a F you that comes across as? I then asked why the F y'all were meeting in the first place, and she told me he's going through rough times and needs someone to lean on, and that she just wanted to be there for him because he's a nice person, and that by hanging with him in my apartment, it shows nothing shady is going on. I explain how that is bullshit, and that if my ex started having issues, and I was the one comforting her, she would be pissed. She was like no, she'd understand because she has empathy. I was like that's bullshit. Lily, you got pissed at me at the gym because I smiled when a girl complimented my form when lifting. She then was like, I'm done talking and stormed out. I didn't say anything, I didn't chase, and I haven't reached out. I just sat on the couch and thought about what the F just happened. I then called my father, who gave me some great advice. She then texted me these two hours ago. Can we talk? 
I'm sorry for not telling you that it was my ex that I invited who was inviting over. I don't want you to get the wrong idea that nothing happened. Nothing is going to happen. I love you. He messaged me out of the blue, saying he needed someone to talk to. I didn't think that much of it. I'm sorry for deceiving you. That sounds like BS right? I didn't think much of it, followed by sorry for deceiving you obviously, you did think about it, or you would have been truthful. I wanted to talk to him at your place, because I didn't want you to assume something else was going on. Please talk to me. I love you. Obliviously, if she sees this, she'll know I'm talking about us, but she doesn't use Reddit. I haven't responded yet, and I'm leaning towards wanting to break things up with her after talking about all this with my pops. Not for her talking to him, but for how I felt in the moment, it was all happening. It's a huge red flag for me that she said, old fiend, instead of ex. I still don't get it. I'm in the moment of getting visibly upset with her ex. She didn't take my side once. When I was nice, before I even recognized him, it felt like I was the odd man out. I just felt like she didn't respect me. Not on some 1950s SHT where the woman has to respect the man. But if the roles were reversed, and I was with my ex at her house, I would have backed my girl when she was getting mad. I would have called my ex out for talking cocky to my girl etc. I'm still very pissed, so I don't think I should be talking to her right now. It's currently around 3am. Sincerely, I'm just effing tired if I'm pissed. Edit 1. It's currently 12.44pm. It's already been a long effing day, and will continue to be a long effing day. I've seen your comments. I'll update them tonight or tomorrow, depending on what the F ends up fully playing out. It's been a hoof-ass level of a day so far. I'm getting like 3 hours of sleep. P.S. I added paragraphs. This whole thing was just typing the words from my thoughts last night. I had no idea how many would view this. Update post. 16 hours later. Update. This SHT is long. I doubt you actually want to read it all. Sorry, I just poured my thoughts into it. It's currently around 7 p.m. when I write this, and honestly, the last 13-ish hours I've been up have been effing draining, to say the least. I awoke in the morning to my phone going absolutely nuts with notifications from Reddit. I'm honestly like OF, oh, why the actual F did I decide to pour my personal thoughts out into a Reddit post? I began to scroll through y'all's comments, and to say I was shocked is an absolute understatement. Literally, almost all of y'all are actively taking my side. And I mean I was just scrolling this morning just looking for that one comment that was taking hers. It did not come. What surprised me the most were the number of women in this thread who said they would never do this to their man, and that it was beyond disrespectful. I mean those comments hit the hardest this morning, as those were my thoughts exactly. Last night was a effing stress storm for me, to be honest. I couldn't believe what the F had just happened. As you can guess from my post, I live alone. So there wasn't anyone at my crib that I could talk to, so I decided to call the one man who's had my back since day one. My pops. As many have messaged me and many have commented, I will go into detail on what exactly our phone call entailed. First, I'm going to go back to when it originally happened so that it makes more sense. Also, when reading back my thoughts from last night, it was clear I was rushing at the end, and honestly just fed up with everything at that point. So I skipped a lot of details. Okay, to start Lily had just stormed out of my apartment at this point when I called her out, saying that she wouldn't be effing okay with me meeting with my ex because they needed someone to lean on. Like I said before, I didn't call out, text or follow her. At this point, I am effing furious, and I can't believe what the F just happened. I take a seat on the couch and try breathing exercises. I am trying to calm down but it's no use because I keep remembering Kyle asking, do you want me to leave? To my girlfriend. I didn't really elaborate on this beforehand, but that SHD effing sent me to another world, and I was absolutely about to lose my SHD to the max. I just kept telling myself, it's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. At this point, all I want to do is beat Kyle's arse, and all my methods for calming down were failing at this point. I just said F it and picked up my phone and said, Siri, call old man. I honestly didn't know what I was going to say at this point, but I knew if there was one person who could get through to me, it would be my pops. Now I don't remember the exact dialogue that exactly went down, but I'm going to try my best to be as accurate as possible. Phone dialing dad picks up and says, I saw it already. Vooch dropped 43 on their arse. I started laughing a bit and saying, it's not about that dad. I just went into a huge effing fight with Lily. Dad, I'm really effing pissed. Dad, I don't want to do anything stupid. Whoa whoa okay, where are you right now? Are you with her? Are you guys okay? I'm at the crib right now, and she just stormed out. Yes, I am chilling. I just don't know what to do. Me. There's a long pause after this, and I hear my pops take a deep breath and say, Alright, alright, hit me. 
I began to give him the same rundown I gave you guys in my last post. The whole time my pops is dead silent. He doesn't say a effing word. I finished up the story. All he asked was, what does Kyle look like? I won't lie, this caught me off guard because I was like, damn dad, why the F does it matter what he looks like? I responded, uh, I don't know, he was white with long, curly hair etc. Why? My dad was like, no no, how tall was he? At this point I'm like, WTF dad, uh, I don't know, his arse was like 5'9 max. My dad laughs a bit and says, explain the Timberlands then, effing male equivalent of heels. I didn't realize it yesterday, but what my dad was doing was what he always does. I literally can't stay pissed if I laugh, and my dad can make me laugh on demand. I started laughing. I was like, you right, you right. And he then was like, how much do you think he weighed? I had to think for a minute, but I was like, hmm, maybe a buck fifty-five-ish. My pops then brought up the argument between Kyle and me. You said Lily told Kyle to leave after you started to get mad, right? Yeah, I responded. My dad pauses for a long time again and takes another deep breath. My name I wouldn't be surprised if this situation is a lot deeper than it seems. It speaks volumes to me that she only rallied for him to leave after you began to get really upset. My name you are 60190 pounds, and were just disrespected in your own house by a man you do not know. When a woman cares for someone, the last thing she wants is for him to be in harm's way. She understood exactly what was going to happen if the situation continued to escalate, and she chose to get Kyle out of harm's way. Followed by shifting all the blame to you and leaving. Honestly son, where do you think she's at right now? I didn't say anything. I knew what he was implying. I know it hurts, but promise me you won't do anything irrational. She made her decision. There's not much you can do to change it. You've proven your whole life that you're one of them. Don't lose yourself now over something that will just end up a tiny bump on your road map. I mean seriously, I couldn't be more effing proud of you son. You're 22 and living on your own in city. You got your SHD together that's rare my name, you're rare my name. The right woman, like your mom for me, I laughed a little, will walk into your life when you least expect it. Don't waste your energy. Everything happens for a reason. I paused for a minute and said, Thank you, I needed this dad. My dad laughed and said, Of course your mom and I are here for you always. Ends call. Fast forward to this morning. I couldn't sleep for SHT last night, so this morning was just completely arse. Lily was blowing up my phone the whole night, apologizing and begging for my forgiveness. It's around 11 a.m. at this point, and I'm completely over this situation. I still haven't responded to her since she stormed off last night. In my opinion, she made her choice. However, I have a long arse week ahead of me and can't have this SHT continue to impact me this much going forward. I eat something and head down to my apartment's local gym to just run on lifting days. I go to a private gym, and on cardio days, I use the apartment's gym. Running is therapeutic for me. Around 1 o'clock, I got a phone call, and you guessed it. It was from Lily. No part of me wanted to pick up the phone, but we've been dating for two and a half years. I felt obligated. Picks up the phone. What's up? I say to be immediately met with crying. I'm sorry my name, I love you to death. Please just talk to me. I shouldn't have left last night. I panicked. You know I love you my name. I didn't say anything. My name, please talk to me. This isn't right. Please just talk to your girlfriend. I'm sorry. I told you nothing happened. I won't ever talk to him again please. I beg, can we just talk? At this point, the realization of my feelings for her started to really kick in. Instead of anger, sorrow, or any emotion, I just felt a sense of indifference when she spoke. I responded. Can you come over around three? I was still crying at this point. Yes, 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 she says. Okay, I say. Ends call. I'm just sitting on the sofa at this time, waiting for three to roll around. Scrolling through the comments on my previous post. Knock, knock, I hear from the hallway. Shortly after, I see my girlfriend emerge from the mini hallway. She begins to start smiling and crying while wiping her tears. Again I take notice of how I feel at this moment. A sense of indifference. A feeling I don't care about anymore. It really started to hit me two and a half years wasted just like that. The woman who I cared for so deeply for just 24 hours before now is in front of me crying, and I don't feel a thing. Lily, it's over between us, I said. Completely shocked, she barely manages to mutter out, what? While still crying. It's over, I repeated. My name, my name, my name, my name, my name. No, 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 no. Please, I'm sorry. Don't end this between us. I love you to death, she said hysterically. Now, I won't lie, that last bit hit hard. I mean, effing hard, man. I couldn't mask it anymore. The lid had been broken. Don't end this between us. I say. Lily, I'm sorry. 
I can't take this SHT anymore. I don't know what impression I gave you of our relationship, but I won't stay in a relationship with a woman who thinks that effing little of me. You made the decision to end SHT between us when you invited your ex into my apartment behind my effing back Lily. That is something I refuse to let slide. Lily, at this point, my thoughts just begin to flow out of my mouth like a effing tidal wave. No man is that quirky for no reason Lily. I'm not an effing fool, Lily. You gave him some type of reassurance to give him the confidence to act like that. SHT, you even backed him in front of me. Why the F would I stay with someone who is not going to have my back? Absolutely bawling at this point, Lily says. I'm sorry my name. I love you. I'm sorry. You can call me whatever you want. But at this point, I just went soft. I didn't have the heart to keep drilling her anymore. She was just breaking down, crying uncontrollably. I just sat down in silence. My name I'm sorry it won't happen again. My name. I love you only. I won't ever talk to him again I promise. My name, please just give me one more chance, said Lily. I'm completely silent. I mean there was just a huge effing pressure on my chest. It felt like my ribcage was going to crack under the pressure. I sat there silently, listening to her cry. I remembered one of my favorite songs. I'd rather have loyalty than love, cause love really doesn't mean jack. See, love is just a feeling. You can love somebody and still stab them in the back. It doesn't take much to love. You can love somebody just by being attached. See, loyalty is an action. You can love or hate me and still have my back. 21 Savage I just kept repeating those lyrics in my head over and over and over again. To many, it might seem she said all the right things, but to me actions speak louder than words. Last night, she chose to make her decision about us through her actions, and since actions speak louder than words, it really didn't matter what she said. I'm struggling to keep it together at this point. I really did love her. SHT, I still effing do. But I understood this was what's best for me. I wouldn't have been able to trust her again. You can't be in a relationship without trust or loyalty. I lost both to her. As she cries, I look up and say, Lily, please, it's over. There's no saving this, she says, looking at me and saying, My name. No, please just stop. It's over, Lily. I interrupt. Please just do us both a favor and take your things and leave Lily. It's over, please. Let's just end it here. She doesn't say anything, gets up, and starts grabbing some of her things around the apartment. I grabbed a garbage bag and helped her pack. She left the keys to my apartment on the table and left. This all finished up around 4.30 today. I've just been sitting here trying to process what the F just happened. Honestly, it all still doesn't feel real. I never intended on posting on Reddit yesterday, but I just needed a place to effing vent. And since it blew up, I felt like I should update y'all today. It's 7.35 as I finish writing this. I'm effing hurt. The weight of what the F just went down over the last 24 hours isn't real. To anyone who actually read this long update, thank you. To those who commented on my previous post, thank you. I effing needed a place to vent last night. Relevant comments. I tried to be as transparent as possible and show both sides to the best of my ability. What y'all read was my raw emotion. Over the last month, I've picked up journaling on my self-improvement journey. It's really helpful to understand your own thoughts. Last night, I decided to post to this sub instead of my notes app. I appreciate the kind words you all have given me. I'm going to continue to work on myself and push forward. Your ages. My ex and I are both 22. You know Lily best. Do you think she cheated? I avoided talking about this, and as many are criticizing in the comments, I didn't ask questions. I don't know what they talked about. I don't know where she went that night. I'm left with my own imagination on that. The fact of the matter is that it doesn't matter if they engaged in sexual activities or not. It wouldn't have changed the outcome. My frustrations were never about that. It was the lack of respect she displayed toward me. I don't know if she is physically cheating, and honestly, I don't care. Multiple dealbreakers were broken with the information I do have. Second story. OPM21 was given emergency custody of his four-year-old sister. With help from Reddit, he stepped up. Mods. I'm aware my previous post was removed. So I hope this helps clear it up. I am not looking for medical or legal advice. But I'm in over my head, and I don't know a thing about taking care of a child. Relevant info from my previous post. I'm not a dad, but I don't know where else to ask other than Reddit parenting subs. I haven't talked to my mother in years. I ran away because life was SHT. My dad died when I was two or three, and my mother coped with alcohol and drugs. We basically lived with whomever she could either get money or drugs out of. I don't even know how, but she managed to not get pregnant while I lived with her. I ran away at 15. I haven't talked to my mother since. I'm 21 now. I managed to get my SHT together through sheer luck, 
and because of a few amazing people. Pro tip. If you need someone or something, talk to your librarian. They're saints. I got my GED. I have a car, a job that allows me to be okay most months, and a cat that stinker has adopted me on the street. I'm a few hours away from where I grew up. I got a call last Friday that informed me that I apparently have a three-year-old sister. And she got taken by CPs I guess. And as I'm the only family they can find, I can take her in so she doesn't stay in the foster care system. I have heard so many horror stories from others I meet on the street about the system. I didn't want that. Especially given why she's been removed from my mother and whatever guy she's with now. All I know is that she's three. Her name and that she's scared and needs to go to lots of medical appointments and therapy. And I just got a call that a social worker is bringing her to me and checking out my apartment tomorrow, planning to do an emergency home study I passed. And I was cleared to take care of her until there's more legal stuff settled for a more permanent placement, probably with me. I have barely anything for the kids. I have no idea what I am going to do with a three-year-old. Can I even afford this? What do three-year-olds eat or like to do? Apparently McDonald's is a hit still. Do I need diapers? Pull-ups I guess. A bed or a baby bed thing. I got a mattress on the floor for now. But the social worker said that would be fine for now. I don't have drugs. I do have alcohol though. I locked it in the pantry. I could probably try to have more healthy food instead of oven food or microwave food. But I don't really know how to cook more than pasta and boiled potatoes. Still don't. And McDonald's is expensive. Also, what do I do with her when I need to work? SW is helping. I took two weeks off of work. I don't even know what else I need to know. I'm freaking out. I don't know her. Will she like me? I'm not sure she likes me. She doesn't trust me, that's for sure. But she also doesn't want to sleep in a room by herself. I've set up camp in front of her room's door for now. She does like my cat. And that arse prefers to cuddle with her. Here's what I need help with. How can I get her to relax? She's always tense. And just. I mean I know. But I want her to know that she's safe here. Food. I've been told that she's supposed to have lots of food and regular meals, but I'm sure they don't mean microwave meals and McDonald's. Are there any good resources online I can use to learn how to make toddler-friendly meals? But mainly, how can I connect with her? She barely talks. I don't know if that's because she can't, or because she doesn't want to. Also, any recommendations on security cameras that are renter-friendly? I want to make sure to protect us from the egg donor. Edit update. I looked for the guy with no groups on Facebook and I asked my landlady for help regarding clothes and toys. She's the one who helped me off the street, and is sort of calling herself my fairy godmother. She asked her kids for things they don't need anymore for their kids, and they showed up with three Rubbermaid tote boxes full of all kinds of clothes. I'm also getting some kids' bedding sets, frozen costumes, and furniture pieces from the Buy Nothing group. I can't express how grateful I am for that tip. So instead of using some money to buy clothes, we went to Walmart to buy more food and she got to pick fruits, bread, and the peanut butter and jelly she wanted. Also some m and and she chose a squishy marshmallow stuffed cat unicorn thing she's just been hugging and squeezing. It was a little splurge, but at least I think I'm good at clothes and stuff. She passed out in the car, and wasn't even woken up when I carried her in. The SW is coming by tomorrow to talk about the whole financial aid stuff, and I wrote down all the programs everyone mentioned to make sure to ask about them. I know they're helping with daycare and the cost. But I think WIC is something I want to ask about too. I'll be going to the library to check out some books and try to get a bunch on tape. That'll be easier to listen to while I'm doing some DoorDash. I work in construction, so I can't listen at work. But depending on the drive, I can listen on my way there and back. I think both our lives have taken a giant turn. I never expected to take care of a child this young. I was actually actively trying to avoid it. But I also understand how incredibly lucky I got to get off the street and away from that life and I don't want her to have to go through this. My hope is that she'll never have to go back or remember it. Even if I don't know if I'm up to taking her permanently, it looks like the state is pressing to terminate parental rights for her parents. That's still scary, but I'm trying to just take it step by step. We're not there yet. Thank you all. And thank you to everyone who messaged me. A week ago, I was losing my mind, and I still am. But I have some hope that I can do this. This was intended as a throwaway. But I have a feeling I need more help than just once. I have friends who know my real account, and not how I grew up. I'd like to keep it that way. An update was posted in our parenting. Update. Wow. It's been a month. It's crazy how fast this went. And I'm so grateful to everyone who left tips and advice for me on my other post. I still don't really think I have a plan for what I'm doing. But we have figured out a daily rhythm that somewhat works. I learned a lot, and most importantly, 
I hate Mickey Mouse Clubhouse. Ha. Huh. Jokes aside. We've made some real progress. She's talking to me. She allows side hugs and loves coloring. She makes so many little pictures that are a gift for me or my landlady. I've found so much support locally by reaching out to buy nothing groups seriously. People offered to bring wagon loads of stuff, thank you. And I found some weekend mommy and me tumbling classes at a church here. It was a little awkward showing up there, but everyone was super welcoming and helpful. It's just some tumbling over mats and a balance beam, but she loves it. And I think it helped her build some trust in me. She actually jumped into my arms from one of those stacked mattress towers after her third class. I am definitely struggling with managing work and pick up times at daycare. I work in construction, and traffic is horrible due to the construction site. And my boss isn't letting anyone leave sooner. From a legal perspective, I made sure she had a guardian at litem thanks to the Redditor who mentioned this. And the state is moving towards the termination of parental rights due to the charges against our egg donor and her boyfriend. It has been hard reliving my childhood memories, and so much harder taking my sister to doctors and therapy appointments to make sure she'll be healthy and happy. The social worker in charge of the case does an okay job, but I can tell she's overworked and just has very little time, and I do need to reach out a lot to get answers. I want to become her permanent legal guardian. She doesn't have anyone else who's interested in taking her or seen as wanting to take care of her. Seeing as I'm a 21-year-old sober runaway with a GED, the bar is really low and I can't imagine what the alternatives look like. So here's to her talking to me, trusting me enough to jump from a mattress tower to me, having an absolute meltdown because I picked the wrong shade of pink for her sippy cup, making mom friends, staying sober for another month. I was told that tantrums are a sign that she trusts me, so I guess I had to include it on the list of victories for the last month. OP posted on our mom for a minute. Mom, why couldn't you get sober? I don't even remember a time when you didn't try to get high. I don't remember you and dad together. I don't remember us being happy. I remember needles on the table in the dining room. The living room. Suddenly packing up and moving to a different place with different men. I miss my dad too. I'm mad he had to die. And you basically died too. Why didn't you want to get sober? I was a freaking child. I took Kay in after social services called me last month. She will hopefully never learn how to clean up vomit before going to school. Why didn't you care when I ran away? Why didn't you even try to find me? Why did you choose to have men around those beat kids? Why couldn't you just be a mom for me? I just wanted a mom. You didn't care if I got high. You only cared that no one touched your crap. You don't care to see K. You're three-year-old because you think she's trying to steal your man. WTF. If you don't want to see her, that's fine. I'm going to make sure you never will again. I may not have a lot of money, but I can keep her safe. OP posted on our dadit, a photo of his sister smiling with the title. I'm not her dad but that is one of the best smiles she's given me, and I can't imagine not having her with me anymore. I also managed to do pigtails for the first time, and OP commented. We went to a different playground today because we were invited to tag along with some moms I met through a tumbling class with her. She had so much fun spinning on this thing and just yelled for me to look. I'm still scared about taking care of a toddler, but today was fun and tantrum-free. I might just be her brother, but that smile is the best thing ever. I never knew how effing quick you could fall in love with someone you didn't know. And I hope I can hang out here with y'all because I don't have any dad friends. OP posted on our dad. Single dads, do you date? Long story short. I'm currently taking care of my little sister K3. I met a girl, and we hit it off. She knows that I'm my sister's guardian. We have been messaging and talking about going to see the new Jurassic Park movie. Obviously, I can't take my sister to Jurassic Park. I will get a babysitter. K's met the girl because she's active in the church I take K to for the gymnastics group. But if she agrees to go out with me, what's the rule? What's a no-go? I grew up with my mother constantly having men around so she could get high. I'm sure K had similar experiences. OP posted on our parenting. Advice on how to deal with a preschool teacher. I'm the guy who took in his little sister. And I need some more advice. She started preschool early this year because she qualifies for it in our state. Daycare and preschool are at the same center, but she's in different buildings or classrooms for preschool and daycare. It's only been a little over a week, and I keep getting calls during work from the teachers at preschool that she's acting up and unmanageable. At drop-off today, the one teacher pissed me off because they questioned if I even knew what I was doing, if I was even taking Kay to therapy, and that she wants to get in touch with a social worker because she thinks the state shouldn't have given me custody since I'm too young and a guy, so I couldn't possibly care for a little girl because I must be more into having a girlfriend than caring for my sister. 
My girlfriend started doing Kay's hairdo in the morning, and Kay loves it. I'm effing pissed. This boomer, who has known Kay for a little over a week, makes assumptions because of my age and because I'm a guy. I walked out shaking without saying a word. We go to therapy twice a week. Once for her, and once for both of us together. The court trial for the egg donor and her sperm donor is coming up next week, so we've been to a ton of appointments at court. She won't have to speak during the trial or be there, but I know she's had a hard time. I'm barely hanging on to staying sober. What is the reasoning behind all this? She was told Kay is a perfect child, and Kay is acting up, screaming and crying at drop-off. Hitting and biting other kids that want to take a turn at something she's doing. Not saying that's okay, but she's three. She's been through more than any of the other kids, and it's been something possible changes in behavior. The therapist has warned the preschool staff at the IEP meeting about. She's showing some of the same behaviors at daycare. They know this has been a struggle for us the last few weeks. But they don't make it clear that I'm failing her. She does seem to be a bit better around the daycare staff. How do I deal with the teacher? She's also been dismissing me, correcting her for using the term oriental as being too woke. I don't think I need to explain to anyone why that's racist in 2022. Happy updates though. I've got a girlfriend 20 who has been an amazing help. We've been taking things slow. She has a four-year-old daughter. And all the girls know is that they've got a ton of play dates, and they love it. They're in the same preschool, so Kay takes full advantage of getting her hair done nicer. On days I do her hair, she'll pay me on the arm and say, You tried. I'm proud of you. We've also been hanging out a lot with their family, and they're teaching us Korean. I'm surprised at how much I remember. And my girlfriend's grandma has been enjoying teaching me to cook. I'm happy to report that I can cook more than mac and cheese and chicken nuggets now. I can make Korean fried chicken now. Comment from OP. Yes, I did need to correct her on the oriental comment. On the first day of school at drop-off, her first reaction was, Oh, I didn't expect you to be a little oriental girl. I'm Korean. Our egg donor is Korean, and her sperm donor is not. She has a non-Korean first and last name. I don't have the same last name as her. Had she said, Oh, I didn't expect you to be Asian. I'd have let it slide. I know I'm young. I know I'm unprepared to be a parent. I'm doing all I can. Her acting out is something we're working on and something her therapist is helping with. And the school has been informed that most likely her overly perfect behavior was a trauma reaction and that the court procedures might trigger her behavior to change. Her comments feel uncalled for. There was no guarantee if she'd go into the foster system that she wouldn't be abused and traumatized again. The system is not working and her considering reaching out to the social worker because I can't control K is overstepping a line. I'm aware of her behavior. I'm the one staying up with her during her night terrors. She doesn't behave as bad, or at least they don't make it out as bad, at daycare. What else can I do other than therapy, and make sure I do what I tell her? I'd have appreciated not being just told I can't, and shouldn't be doing this simply because I'm a young guy. I'm not sure this isn't also because of the change from just daycare to preschool, and then daycare until I pick her up after work. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.